What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything and today we are in my parking garage. More specifically, right behind me is the car that I drive. It's a Skoda Superb station wagon with a big diesel engine in it. Uh, it's chip-tuned so it is uh, pretty fast, uh, fast enough to scare Audis on the German Autobahn uh, and it's a fantastic car for cruising long distance to Switzerland with the kids in the back. But unfortunately I don't drive to Switzerland with the kids in the back every day. Uh, which got me thinking, here in an urban environment where I live it is not really at its place. Uh, you know, it's great for on the highway, but in a city, it's just, you know, not of this time anymore. Now, next to my car, you see that there's an empty spot. Uh, that's the spot of my wife's car. She drives a Golf, also a diesel. Uh, so that's much smaller and usually the car we use for the daily drives, groceries and so on. Uh, not really to drive the kids around in. Uh, so that got me thinking, are there cars that are affordable and sort of work on a day-to-day -day base, uh, like my wife's Golf, uh, that you can get today? And there's only a handful of examples available. You got the e-Golf, uh, you got the Chevy Bolt, you got the Nissan Leaf, and the Renault Zoe. And that's actually the car we're testing today. Um, Renault, here in Eindhoven, Renault Irons has been so uh, kind to lend me a Renault Zoe uh, for a few days to test it out and see what it's like to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. So here we are at Arends Auto, like I said. I'm here with Marijn. He does the sales here and he uh, arranged for me to borrow the Zoe for a few days. Um, Marijn, I was wondering, what kind of people buy this car? Because um, is it people that just walk in and want to buy it or is it certain kind of people? Who's this um, for? I think most people that are um, buying a Zoe are already uh, looking at driving an electric vehicle. Yeah. Uh, if it's a Zoe or a uh, Leaf, yeah. doesn't matter. Um, I think most people are already looking uh, online, you know, and seeing the advantages uh, buying an electric car has, yeah. uh, either for the environment or for the financial position. And I think that's the main reason people right now uh, are buying Zoe. Yeah. Fair enough. So it's not people that come in here looking for a new car and then say, oh, by the way, I see an electric car, tell me more about that. No, I think some people might walk in and uh, see the car for the first time. Yeah. Um, but it's not like that's, I believe that's not uh, going to change them uh, to buy an electric car instead of a fuel car if they okay. came for that. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, you're a specifically certified dealership to sell the electric cars. Uh, why is that? Uh, right now, um, the most important thing is um, working on an electric car is uh, a little bit more complicated and different yeah. uh, from working on a, a fuel car yeah. with an, a fuel engine. Um, so not every dealer right now is certified to work on a car or uh, sell the car. Okay. But in the near future, I'm sure every dealer will be able to maintain and uh, sell, uh, sell electric cars. So if I buy the car here, then I'm sort of secure with the, the knowledge of your technicians that are working on the car, that it's, it's all done yeah, properly. That's basically why we give guarantee on the uh, stuff we do. Yeah. Um, but in order to do that, we need people uh, that work on the cars uh, know what they are doing. Obviously, yeah. Um, so at the moment you have one model, effectively, the, the Zoe that we're going to drive later. Yeah. Um, how does the future look like? What is Renault planning to bring out? Um, Renault, uh, Renault has uh, already introduced uh, the Renault Master, yeah. so it's a very big uh, van um, with a little short range for now, but I'm sure in the near future uh, it's going to increase. Yeah. Um, Renault is working together with the, uh, the Nissan and the Mitsubishi, uh, together their form an alliance, and uh, the three are uh, sharing technology uh, to improve their uh, electric vehicle uh, range and yeah. battery cost. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for giving the opportunity that I can actually uh, try this out. Thank you, no Aaron Auto, as well, obviously, for uh, providing the car. And um, I guess I'll see you in three days. Sounds good. Have fun. Thanks. All right, we are on the way. According to the range meter, I have 149 kilometers uh, battery left, and it's seven kilometers to my house. So I think we're safe. Uh, the silence is awesome right away. It's uh, you hear a bit of fan noise, obviously, uh, but other than that, it's quiet, which is cool. Now this is a pretty good test drive right away because sort of we're in the middle of the city right now which is exactly where this car belongs. It's an urban environment that's, that this car really shines in. Uh, so it's actually quite a nice uh, road test right away to drive this car in its natural habitat. Right away, the fact that there's no gear change is funny. It's weird. 
Uh, I drive a DSG box with a dual clutch, uh, so you know shifting is seamless in my everyday car. Uh, but obviously seamless shifting is you know, something completely different than no shifting. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a little wow, wow, wow sound going on. Under 30 kilometers an hour, this car actually emits sound uh, to warn people that you're coming. Because obviously you don't really hear an electric car coming because it has no engine sound, right? Um, which could potentially be dangerous in areas where there's pedestrians or residential areas, areas where you're driving under 30. Uh, but above 30, there we go, the sound goes away. So it's only up to 30 kilometers an hour, and after that you're uh, sort of in quiet mode again. So we're now going to turn onto the highway for a little bit, which obviously is not this car's natural habitat. Uh, it doesn't really fit the electric motor to begin with to drive, you know, long distance at higher speed. Uh, that's not, you know, inherent to the nature of the electric motor. Uh, but obviously, as a real car, it has to be able to do it. So, let's uh, see how things go. Bring up the speed here. Now, obviously, because of the lack of engine noise, you're very aware of wind noise and fan noise and any other kind of noise going on. Uh, we're now doing 102 and it sounds like it to be honest i have to say though like there's a range meter on the dash obviously um, that little burst of acceleration getting on the highway um, made my range drop by 10 kilometers so you know that is definitely something that is part of the deal i suppose when you're driving an electric car yeah and this is what happens when you want to charge your car and there is an idiot with the trailer on both charging spots now I do understand that he needs a bit of space with his trailer to park but how am I supposed to charge my car now luckily I still got some battery but this is not a really good situation now, this car has an eco mode which I personally think you will never use um, because it reduces your speed on the highway a lot um, it does give you potentially more range uh, but like I said, I think you'll be charging this car at home all night long or at work all day long So you always have plenty of range anyway, uh, and I don't think you're gonna be depending on your eco button uh, What I could see though is uh, I caught myself doing it a few times as well Is that you're gonna uh, be trying to drive as economic and as super green as possible just for the heck of it So you're sort of playing a game with yourself uh, How economic can I drive which is fun for you know a little bit, but I don't think you'll be doing that in the long run either so today the final day with the Renault Zoe we have to bring it back to Auto Ahrens today uh, we're outside and it is freezing as you can see end of March officially spring has begun but it is zero degrees here in Holland so hence the hat and the jacket um, what do we make of the car well um, it's a good question let's have a look at it as a car I think uh, as a car exercise it's very successful uh, it's a small compact car you know so it feels very much at home in an urban environment even disregarding the electric stuff uh, this is a car uh, perfect for the school run, the shop run, uh, going to the sports club, uh, plenty of space in the back for a kid or two, plenty of space in the front for adults for comfortable journeys, uh, and plenty of space in the boot for all your daily shopping needs, bags and carries and so on. Uh, so as a car it functions pretty perfectly. Um, it's pretty refined, it's quiet enough, uh, it has a good enough uh, spec of luxury, especially in this case because it's a dealer car of course, uh, but overall it works really well as a package. I think it looks good, uh, it's, uh, it's an electric car obviously and they sometimes try to be too funky, too futuristic and so on. Uh, not the case here, you know, there's little touches uh, that give it away obviously, but they haven't tried too much, they haven't overdone it. So I think uh, it is understated enough uh, that it doesn't pop out too much, but it looks cool, modern and I think overall it's a very good looking car. Now I have to admit going into this drive, um, I wasn't too skeptical at range and so on. Because uh, I don't feel that I drive more than two, three hundred kilometers a day and need to be able to charge all the time and like, oh no, my EV can't make it to Switzerland, which you do once a year anyway. Um, those feelings still remain, um, but it has been a bit of an eye opener. I think if you have a car like this, you're going to have a charger at home or at work or probably even both, and you will not be relying on uh, charging stations at IKEA or at a bus stop or at a gas station and so on. Uh, I really think that you'll be driving this car all day long without really thinking about it and just when you come home you plug it in 
and that's it, which is a two second job and overall it'll uh, obviously not add up to you know, going to the gas station and fueling your car up because that also takes time. Uh, so I really think this is a car that you will probably forget about that it's electric at some point because uh, you just drive it and that's it. Uh, if you charge it at work it won't cost you anything except for you know, normal uh, car payments in terms of insurance and so on. Uh, so I think it's a very complete package. Now I have to admit, on the highway it doesn't feel that much at home. It tops out at 140 km an hour and you could say, yeah, how often do you drive 140? Uh, you don't do it that often, but you know, overtaking on the highway and so on, um, not the perfect car for that. For longer journeys for sure, uh, it is just not that suitable. What I do see though is that the battery technology as it is today um, is probably just not good enough yet. Um, you know, the influences of temperature, weather, rain, um, it's just too much on the battery at this point. Uh, also when you go on the highway for example and you floor it to just yield in, um, you're gonna lose 20 kilometers of range at some point, which is obviously, uh, you know, just to read it on the computer, but it's, that's just not acceptable at this point. Does it matter in real life? I don't think so. Because uh, like I said, you won't be driving 300 kilometers a day in this car. Uh, but it is something to take into consideration. In conclusion though, I think this car as it stands here today, so you can buy it today, it's on the road today, and you can drive it like a normal car. It's a fantastic exercise and a bit of a showcase into the future of what's possible. I think Renault has done a great job in making a car that looks good, looks normal like a car, and yet feels very modern in the way it's uh, built, it drives. Uh, with that uh, electric technology in there, I think it is a very complete package that works in the real world. Uh, despite its limitations, uh, I think those limitations are mainly Theoretical, uh, you know they exist, but I think in real life you're not gonna run into them. Now, of course, I gotta give a big shout out to Auto Arends for uh, lending us this car for a few days. Uh, really big thanks to them for making this video possible and really giving us the time and the opportunity to experience this car for several days in the real world, in real life, uh, and really getting a good feel of what it is to live with it. I will put all their information in the description below. So if you are in the Eindhoven area and you're looking to buy a new or used Renault, uh, definitely check them out. They have uh, quite a lot to offer. That was it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. That always helps us out a lot. And I'll definitely catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.